for patients that undergo stenting, um, so they get that kind of uh, symptomatic improvement, the complication rate is uh, about 2%, as I mentioned. Uh, the, the main concerns of the, within that complication rate, uh, the worst is probably a subdural hematoma or a small amount of subarachnoid hemorrhage in addition to um, access site complications like a groin hematoma. Um, altogether, even those with intracranial bleeding, when reversed quickly and, and treated with, uh, with tamponade, uh, those tend to improve and, and very rarely do patients need to go, you know, like a surgical evacuation or something. Um, so uh, major complications are pretty uncommon. Patients needing repeat endovascular procedures, that's around 9%. Usually the most common issue is that they form um, restenosis or new stenosis uh, at the proximal site, so a little bit more laterally uh, at the edge of the stent. And so that can maybe sometimes be avoided by um, placing a longer stent to begin with, or kind of uh, you know focusing a little bit more on exactly how the stent is centered, uh, but nevertheless with those efforts it, there is a small amount of, of restenosis that occurs, which can be retreated with uh, with extending the stent construct a little further down. Uh, and then three percent of patients uh, within this meta analysis ended up needing some sort of a shunt, whether an LP shunt or VP shunt, uh, down the line. So that's uh, somewhat uncommon. 